All right, welcome to part two. Let's continue with where we left off last week with the TriMet service improvements and things. This is going to be entirely my opinions again. These are not just, oh, I opened the TriMet list of buses and just, eh, whatever, made adjustments and stuff. No, I have a reason behind all of the things I have done in this list. But let's start simple. Let's just start with the renaming of the bus lines. I only have a few. Line 14 would change to 14 Hawthorne Foster. 68 would be Markham Hill Goose Hollow. 71 would be 52nd 60th. And line 152 would be Harmony Milwaukee. Okay, now time for line 6 and 7. Yes, line 7. Line 6 would be renamed, again, just a simple rename, to MLK and Jansen Beach, instead of just Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Its route would be the same as it is today. Then there would be a new line, 7 MLK McLaughlin. Now, its route through downtown Portland would be the same as the 6, going from Goose Hollow over the Hawthorne Bridge, but it would take a right onto Grand Avenue. And if you stay on that road, it becomes McLaughlin Boulevard, where you can easily have this bus end at the Tacoma Park and Ride. You could continue it off to downtown Milwaukee, but the Max Orange Line already does that, and that, eh, I think it would just make more sense to end it at Tacoma Park and Ride. If you wanted service to downtown Milwaukee, you could then take the Max Orange Line one stop. Alright, now Council Crest. Why TriMet? Why does Council Crest have to be served the way it is? This is a mess currently. The only bus line heading up to Council Crest and that general area is the Line 51, Vista Avenue, or Vista, whatever. But it's two bus lines in one. Take a look at the existing 51 map. It branches, and it branches big time. I mean, those are two separate bus lines. It is way too confusing to navigate this as a tourist heading up to Council Crest. A park up in the heights that a lot of people go to. So here's my solution to this. Two bus lines. The 51 can stay, I'll talk about that in a second. But now introducing line 3, Council Crest. This line would travel on the same 51 route, but it would replace Line 51 service from downtown Portland to Council Crest only, and it would go on the existing Line 51 route, turning around at Council Crest Drive and Patrick Place, and just the same as how the 51 currently does, and then it would travel back to Portland. And then the 51 would travel only to Dosh and Hamilton. It would only travel on Dosh Road. Line, fi line 3 would travel to Council Crest and Line 51 would travel to Dosh Road. I suppose you could also rename the Line 51 to Dosh and Hamilton to make that more obvious, but that may not be strictly necessary. I also think it would be really cool to put the see Portland from Council Crest, either on the bus reader board somehow, or maybe on a sign somewhere, just like the streetcars did over a century ago. Alright, now time to talk about Gleason Street. Right now, the current Line 19 is way too long, and I have several ideas in mind, but this is what I have settled on. This is 100% personal preference but I do not like horseshoe shaped lines. It seems like it introduces way more issues than it solves. Oh look, the bus crossed over the river onto the west side. Oh hey, now it's crossing back over to the east side? So which way am I going? Am I going to the east side or am I going to the east side? What? That's confusing. It goes, says it goes to Gateway Transit Center or to Mount Scott and 112th. Both destinations are on the east side, yet it goes to the west side. I'm just not a fan of horseshoe-shaped routes because it introduces an element of confusion for me. 
Another personal preference of mine is that I don't like having two separate bus lines disconnected from each other on the same road. Because Gleason Street has the 19 on the east side, all the way up to Gateway. And then Gleason, same street, has the 25 from Gateway onto... Why, why are those separate bus lines? I present a complete redesign of the 19 and 25 at least on Gleason Street. Line 19 would now end at North Terminal, up at the top of the transit mall, which again, you probably can't see on this map. It would end up at North Terminal. So 19 would travel up into downtown and end in downtown. And then when it leaves North Terminal, Union Station, it would serve a stop at Northwest 5th and Davis, before resuming what the normal Line 19 does. It would be renamed to 19 Bybee Woodstock because part of this route travels on Bybee Boulevard which connects with the Orange Line which might give people that are reading the bus list a reason to say, oh, there's a bus on Bybee, cool. Even though it's been doing this for years, it's not immediately obvious with the current name. I would also suggest the Union Manor thing, getting its own shuttle bus, Union Manor Shuttle, and bringing in the mini buses, like bringing in lift buses that just do the Union Manor shuttle every 30 minutes or 45 minutes or something. Um, I think that just makes more sense because there are Line 19s that go to Mount Scott via 28th, via 28th and Union Manor, via 32nd, via 32nd and Rex Loop, via Union Manor 32nd and Rex Loop. There are way too many things the Line 19 does, so again, having the Union Manor Shuttle as a separate thing that people could transfer to all day long instead of, oh, I gotta look at the bus reader board and make sure it says via Union Manor. Oh, this one doesn't say Union Manor, now I gotta wait 15 minutes for the next whole bus instead of just taking every single Line 19 bus and then hopping on the Union Manor Shuttle. The portion on Gleason would be massively extended and completely reworked. This would be your new Line 25, Gleason. It would begin in downtown Portland, right at Providence Park at 18th and Morrison. And in a sort of happy accident, Lines 24 and 26 already serve 18th and Morrison. So this means that Lines 24, 25, 26, as well as several others, would serve this general area. That was not planned. Anyway, it then travels on Burnside Street, goes over the Burnside Bridge, and then continues like the Line 19 currently does, all the way off to Gateway Transit Center. And then, on weekdays, I guess, the bus line would also continue down Gleason and go all the way to the Gresham Transit Center. Not Rockwood like it currently does. It would stay on Gleason all the way until 223rd, come down 223rd, and on to Main Street in Gresham and pass by the Gresham High School before going in to the Transit Center. I would rather that portion not be weekdays only, but I understand if it is for a time being because the existing Line 25 is weekdays only. Alright, now time to talk about Johnson Creek Boulevard. This is currently partially served by the Line 34. It goes on Johnson Creek Boulevard before taking a right onto Linwood, which is part of its name, Linwood River Road. But I have some changes for that. During this portion, I would reroute the 34 onto Harney Drive, which is also being served by the Line 75. And all the way until Flavel Drive, and then it comes down Flavel Drive, which becomes Linwood Avenue. So it still retains most of the route. And then a new bus line would open going on Johnson Creek Boulevard, the 28 Johnson Creek Boulevard. This would travel from the Tacoma Park and Ride all the way down Johnson Creek Boulevard, clear down until I-205. It continues down there to 92nd Avenue, and then 92nd Avenue becomes Bob Schumacher Road, if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not, and then goes on to Sunnyside Road and into Clackamas Town Center. There you go, yet another bus line serving Clackamas Town Center. Okay, now time for a huge surprise for me. Terwilliger Boulevard. Terwilliger Boulevard does not have its own dedicated bus. 
it has some bus service on it, but lots of lines use it for a short stretch. And I just don't, it's kind of a mess and there's a lot of rush hour only service. This will fix that. Now introducing the 40 to Williger Boulevard. And 40 really is a perfect number to use here because 38 and 39 do use to Williger Boulevard for a stretch. It lines up perfectly with the numbers. This bus would begin up at North Terminal in downtown Portland and it would serve the existing Line 8 stops all the way from there clear up in through Terwilliger Boulevard. This bus will not go through OHSU. You can just take the Line 8 to go into OHSU and Sam Jackson Park and all that. Line 40 would stay on Terwilliger Boulevard. And that's it. It stays on there providing major connections with lines 1, 12, 54, 56, 94, among plenty of others. It would stay on Terwilliger until the very end at State Street in Lake Oswego, and as you might guess, it would end at the Lake Oswego Transit Center. Alright, so quite a few months ago, I made a video on my ideas for Hillsboro bus improvements. I'm not exactly happy with that video. My opinions have changed a lot since then. So let's delve into it. It's no secret that the west side is severely underserved by transit, um, but this is my solution for that. This is my list of new bus lines. Of all these new bus lines, we're going to cover all of these. We're going to hold off on the 41 for now because it kind of connects a bunch of these together, so uh, we'll come back to it. 46, Glencoe Evergreen. This route actually won't change much at all. Uh, I used to think it was a bad idea how windy and crazy of a route it is, but there's a reason why the 46 is so crazy looking. It's because it's running through a slightly rural part of Hillsboro, and because it's trying to serve Intel Jones Farm and the Fair Complex Max Station as well as some areas off by Dawson Creek and Brookwood Avenue and the Hillsboro Library. There's a reason the route is so crazy. Alright, so remember how earlier I mentioned how I don't like how two bus lines might be running on the same street totally disconnected from each other? Yeah, currently the 46 uses Evergreen for a little bit and goes and does all that other stuff and the existing 47 goes on Evergreen, completely disconnected from this bus route. And what? So this would fix that. The 46, again, I call it Glencoe Evergreen. Because after it serves these areas up at Dawson Creek and all of that, it'll take a right onto Evergreen. And from here, it will take over the 47 from here to PCC Rock Creek. So that means the 46 will go from Hillsboro to PCC Rock Creek via Intel and via Fair Complex Max Station. So what about the existing Line 47? Well, it would start, it would be the same, it would actually be the exact same route from Hillsboro all the way up until where Century Boulevard is, but it would not go on Century Boulevard. 47 is renamed to Main Baseline. Main and Baseline. This bus would just travel down Main and Baseline. It would no longer go on Century or Evergreen. Those would get buses of their own. And guess what? Baseline provides an easy connection to the Willow Creek Transit Center, so you could have buses end there. But I think, importantly, you could extend it at some point. To continue, Baseline becomes Jenkins Road in Beaverton and can provide an easy connection to Beaverton Transit Center because at Cedar Hills Boulevard you could take a right on it and follow the Line 20 route from there to the Beaverton Transit Center. That was very wordy. Alright, South Hillsboro, aka Reed's Crossing, it has two names for some reason, would get three, count them, three new bus lines serving Reed's Crossing practically a Reed's Crossing Transit Center. I don't know if it would be a good idea to build a transit center here. It's very neighborhoody, but we're just going to call it Reed's Crossing buses. Line 49. This is a route I am very much still waiting for. 49. 
Cornelius Pass Road. This bus travels up Cornelius Pass Road. I, it really is that simple. It starts in South Hillsboro and ends up on Cornelius Pass and just keeps traveling all the way up past the Sunset Highway and takes a loop via Jacobson, Century, and West Union Roads as its loop. This is up kind of near the Liberty High School. Actually, it's right behind Liberty High School. Line 60 runs on Brookwood and West Union Roads, as the name implies. It travels up Brookwood Avenue and then down West Union Road to PCC Rock Creek. This is a quite rural route, so I'm not sure how important this would be to have it travel on West Union Road, but I do think that Brookwood does need a bus line. And if it started in South Hillsboro and went down Blanton and Alexander Street to get there, I think that's a good idea. And to get into PCC Rock Creek, it would follow the existing Line 52 route from 185th and West Union up to PCC Rock Creek. Alright, remember how I said hold off for the 41? We're, we're getting to the 41 now. This bus also begins in South Hillsboro, and it travels very similarly to the 60 as we saw, but it travels up Century Boulevard, as you might guess from the name, 41 Century Boulevard. But Century Boulevard only goes so far before it ends in this neighborhood and then Noble Woods Park. Now there are two solutions here. You could have it take a right onto some neighborhood street and have it hook around via Cornelius Pass and then Baseline before going on Century, and that was in fact my original plan. Or you could have it go left through some neighborhood streets, go on Brookwood and then Main Baseline before going on to Century. This is what I've chosen. Why? Because that side coming in from the left to go to take a right onto Century and continue the route is exactly what the current 47 does. It comes in from that side, not from the Cornelius Pass side. So I think that would be easier for transferring riders to understand. So instead, I've opted for it to go down Francis Street, Golden Road, and then Brookwood Avenue before taking a right onto Baseline, and then a left onto where Century Boulevard begins again. And then this would continue off to the Hillsborough Stadium. This bus would also replace the existing 47 service to the Orenco Station Loop. Now time for an issue that I'm not sure is actually an issue. One of you guys will have to tell me this, what you think of it. Now, this is again personal preference here, but and this is going to be a bit hard to explain generally, but does it make sense to you to have two separate bus lines that serve the same transit centers but get there differently? Sure, I suppose that makes sense. It serves common transit centers but takes a different route to get there. More coverage, that makes sense. But what if the bus route was named in such a way to where that might cause confusion? This is how I feel with the current line 76 and 78. Anybody who's remotely familiar with Beaverton knows about Hall Boulevard, a very busy road. And so when you see a line 76 that says Hall Greenberg, well, you know, hey, if I want to get anywhere on Hall Boulevard, I'm going to hop on this bus because it says Hall Boulevard. And for much of the route, you would be correct except that there's a portion where the 78 runs on Hall Boulevard and the 76 doesn't. And for some reason, this has bugged me a lot. But I'm not sure. Is this, an, is this a problem to you? Here's my solution to this. Flip the 76 and 78 route between Washington Square and Tigard only. From the Washington Square Transit Center to the Tigard Transit Center only, it would be flipped. This means 76 would run on Hall Boulevard the whole way. So it would be renamed Line 76 Hall Boulevard. Nice and simple, easy. And then the Line 78 would take over the Greenberg portion. And so it would be renamed Line 78 Denny Greenberg. 
To me, this makes a lot of sense. However, this might cause one issue that you might, you know, what if I'm waiting for a bus and now I'm all of a sudden confused about where to go? And now, with 78 having, what, 30 minute frequency for bus lines, but the 76 having 15 minute frequent service, double the frequency? Well, now that seems unfair. Now Greenberg is only getting half the frequency. Well, there's an easy solution to that. Upgrade it so that the 76 and 78 both run at 15 minute frequency. That way, Greenberg retains 15 minute frequent service and Lake Oswego benefits because the 78 ends in Lake Oswego and you're providing twice as many buses there. Alright, now time for another new line with a strategic bus line number. If you compare this with the 88. 89 Allen 170th. This bus would begin at Washington Square Transit Center and it would travel using the line 45 route out of Washington Square up Olson Road or Avenue, I don't remember, and taking a left, yes a left, onto Garden Home Road. It only does this briefly and then it would go onto 92nd Avenue and then finally onto Allen Boulevard where Allen Boulevard begins. And then it would just keep going all the way down Allen Boulevard on going through all of its name changes. It goes through several along the way through neighborhoods connecting with existing services including the 88 which travels on Allen briefly and the 53 which travels on Allen briefly. There's no dedicated bus line on Allen which I'm fixing here. It would then take a right onto 170th connecting with the 88 again and it would stay on 170th all the way until the Elmonica Max Station park and ride and it would turn around in the park and ride kind of near where the handicapped parking spaces are right up near the Max platform. This here I would get some heavy use out of. Bring back the 91! Throughout the 90s, TriMet ran a second bus line on TV Highway called 91 TV Highway Express. This traveled from the Hillsborough Transit Center into downtown Portland. And I would really like to see this brought back. Now the Transit Mall has changed quite a bit through here and honestly it's kind of hard getting it to serve the Transit Mall just because it's kind of hard to take a right off of the Transit Mall. So here's my routing for that. Firstly, it would serve only these stops on TV Highway which turns into Canyon Road. And using this map you can see it takes Walker Road to get onto Highway 217 and then onto Highway 26. And then once it gets into downtown Portland it serves the same stops on Jefferson and Columbia Streets as the 38, 45, 68 I think, 92, 96, all of those bus lines that serve Jefferson and Columbia like that, it would serve those stops before taking a left onto NATO Parkway and returning on Jefferson Street. I also have another idea for something very similar but for Beaverton Hillsdale Highway it would be Beaverton Hillsdale Express. I'm not sure what number to use yet for here though but the route would begin at the Willow Creek Transit Center travel down 185th and then on to Farmington which is Highway 10. Well Farmington eventually becomes Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, Highway 10 and you can easily get into Portland from there as you see with the 54 and 56 and this would serve these stops but like I said there I'm kinda having a hard time numbering this route. The only 90 numbers that are available well, 90 is in use by Max. 93 was just discontinued this last fall, so you probably don't want to reuse that. Not just yet. 95 used to be an old bus line that traveled on Tigard and I-5. It's been discontinued for well over a decade now, so I guess you might be able to use that. And 98 is in use by Max Shuttle. So really there's only four options, and I guess the best one of those would be 95 Beaverton Hillsdale Express. So TriMet operated some 24-hour bus services before the pandemic. They didn't introduce it that long before the pandemic and I think it would be nice to bring those back on lines 20 and 57. 
However, I think if you slightly tweaked those night services, you could do things that make a bit more sense and introduce a bit more flexibility with this sort of routing. The point of these is to serve the community after the max stops running. So I would say because other night services are already numbered in the 200s, I would say you could have the line 220 Burnside Night Bus and the line 257 TV Highway Night Bus. Now these would serve similarly to what the 20 and 57 do, but it is different. The line 220 would not serve stops on Stark or the Mount Hood Community College. It would go from Gresham and go straight onto Burnside and serve the max station platforms on Burnside. And then from there it would be a normal line 20 the rest of the way out into Beaverton Transit Center. And the line 257 on TV Highway would just be a normal line 57 except it would end at the Hillsboro Transit Center or maybe somewhere further west like into Cornelius but I don't see nearly as high of ridership out in that general area, so I think you might be able to get away with just ending at the Hillsborough Transit Center. Okay, so I've talked before about bus garages, and we all know about the Columbia bus site, but I think there needs to be a fifth bus garage. No, not just because. There's a real reason. As I already described earlier, the west side is severely underserved by transit. Merlo Garage is working its guts out trying to get as many buses as possible. Merlo's only so big. I mean, they're covering buses that head off to Portland and all these Beaverton routes. Beaverton is very well served by transit, but Hillsboro isn't. And Hillsboro doesn't have a bus garage. So, there's this plot of land off at Cornell and Cornelius Pass Road, right there on the corner, there's this field that's been there forever. And if you took a small chunk of it and made it into a bus garage, you don't need to take all of that land, just a very small chunk of it, and made it a bus garage, you could do wonders with that. I mean, this would be off of several of my new bus lines. Cornelius Pass, Cornell is already an established bus line, but it could do with some better service as well. This would dramatically help a lot of this whole West Side service issue. So I think you definitely want to consider a fifth bus garage off of Cornell Road. Call it the Cornell Garage, or maybe the West Side Garage, or the Hillsborough Garage, or whatever you want to call it. And now, finally, let's talk about trains. So clearly, I've said before, and it's very evident because of how crowded the trains get, but the max is running at 15 minute frequency. And that is not good enough. 15 minutes is just not good enough. It's fine for maybe the yellow and orange line, just because those aren't as heavily used. But come on, the blue line at every 15 minutes, that is not good enough. I think at a bare minimum, if you doubled the frequency on the blue line to where it offsets 7 minutes, 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 8 minutes, during weekday rush to, re to ease the crowding on some of those trains, I think that would help a lot. You want to know why I think that? TriMet was already doing that before the pandemic. If you look at old blue line schedules via the Wayback Machine and take a look at weekday rush, there were blue lines like every five or six minutes. They just weren't all going to Gresham. There would be some off to Ruby Junction or Gateway, it was weird stuff like that, but there would be extra trains just every five or six minutes, and it worked, and those trains were crowded. Just imagine if it was using the schedule we're using now. Those things would have been packed to the brim, so I think you got to do that, but I've already, if this sounds familiar, I've already done a video talking about increasing max frequency and why it's not as easy as just oh, we're going to wake up tomorrow and we're going to have a schedule change and have a million trains on the system. Yeah, I've done a video talking about that already. And I think streetcar should do the same. Definitely strive for 10 minutes or better on the streetcar. And I know the current streetcar yard is not big enough to handle that amount of vehicles being on the system at once. However, 
if the extension of the existing Portland streetcar down Broadway further to the Hollywood district ever happens, there's a perfect candidate for a new yard there. There's this monstrosity of a building that's near the Hollywood Transit Center that desperately needs to get torn down. And if you were to tear that down, that gives you plenty of room to put a few tracks there to store lots of trains. This is on Broadway between 33rd and 35th, near uh, on the I-84 side. Well, that appears to be it, finally, for this crazy long video. Lots of information thrown at you here, as well as maps. Do what you will with them, and hopefully some member of TriMet watches this and gets some ideas sprinkled into their head. Are my ideas perfect? Absolutely not. But I think getting a start and some ideas is a good way to go. And my Hillsboro bus improvements that you saw here have dramatically improved since my first Hillsboro bus improvements video. Um, so things have evolved already and will likely continue to evolve as my brain never really stops thinking about stuff like this. So this video will most certainly get updated later this year or next year or whatever with additional lines and things to talk about. So for now, I thank you for watching this video, and I guess I'll see you next time. As of the moment you are currently watching this, I'm actually in Seattle, which is really cool. I'm probably on a trolley bus right now as you watch this, if you're watching this the day it was uploaded, or the day after. So, <laughs> look forward to cool videos like that coming your way, as well as a video on Friday, and this video just kind of keeps going on and 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 on.